If you are a software engineer, if you're a UX designer, if you're a product manager. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Leila and I am a product manager working and living in Chicago. I'm filming this video to try out this new format, which is a little bit less formal, a little bit more casual, where we get to spend a day together, we get to work together, study together, um, but it is not as formal as some of those other videos that I have on my channel. So the first thing on my list today is to work on my product management bootcamp, which consists of uh, theory, workshops, and career transition sessions. So the product management bootcamp that I'm working on, it is my own bootcamp. It will be fully live, fully instructor led. And my first cohort, actually my first batch of students are starting in November. The second thing that's on my list today is to plan out some work for a little project that I am doing on the side. It's a little stealth startup. And also I want to dedicate a little bit of time to studying for the GMAT today. I am studying for the GMAT to the focus edition in order to be able to apply to uh, MBAs. I plan on applying to top 10 MBA programs here in the US. Yeah, it's a day in the life of a product manager in Chicago. So let's go ahead and dive right into this video. I feel like my desk gets messy so quickly, uh, no matter how often, like how often I clean it, no matter how dedicated I am when it comes to putting things back to where they belong, it still gets messy. So I like to wipe it as often as I can and as often as I can remember. I wanted to show you my desk set up a little bit to give you an overview of what's going on here right now. There used to be a huge iMac here, a 27 inch iMac, which is gone. And so I used to be able to use my laptop without a laptop stand and without an additional keyboard and a mouse. But I started developing some serious neck and back issues and I'm seeing a doctor for that right now. I'm seeing a chiropractor, I'm doing physical therapy, I'm doing some workouts, stretches, etc. I am no longer able to use my laptop for long periods of time. If I'm gonna be working on my laptop, it has to be on a stand and I have to use a keyboard and a mouse that goes with it. And so that's that. Uh, let me know in the comments down below if that's something that you have started noticing as well. If you, uh, if you do have, if you do get headaches that stem from your neck, if you have back pain, um, maybe take a look at your uh, setup. So yeah, I'm gonna sip on my coffee and kind of mentally get ready for the day, plan out what's on my plate for today. So I've told you guys about my neck and back issues a little bit earlier in the video. So my doctor definitely recommends that I take breaks every hour for like five to 10 minutes to do something different, to do something other than being glued to my screen and glued to my desk. And so I feel like incorporating like little cleaning sessions in between uh, these breaks is a great way to stay productive, but also um, get some action in. Really quickly, I'm gonna vacuum my office really quickly. So my partner and I, we do have two dogs and the cat. And so as you can imagine, this house gets filled with animal hair. So 
it is now lunchtime. I wanted to get something to eat, but it has to be something super, super low effort because um, I am not a big fan of cooking uh, and putting a meal together. I was either gonna go get a sandwich or I was gonna make a noodle soup, but I just remembered that last night we were grilling outside in our terrace, we were grilling um, lamb chops. So I have two pieces um, that are left over from last night. So I'm gonna heat those up. I'm gonna cut up a tomato and some peppers. And I think that's gonna be my lunch for today. Hey guys, so I did a little bit of an exercise in the middle of the day. I took a few minutes off to stretch and to work out because I felt like an ocular migraine was coming over me. And I do get these a lot lately. And then again, it's because I have to be sitting down or standing up and working a lot in front of the computer. I feel like I have a better connection and a better understanding of how my body works right now. Before, I would just take a painkiller and my whole day would be ruined if I got a migraine, but now it's like I know when it's coming, I know what I can do to get ahead of it. By the way, I like to complement my workout routine with a cleaning routine as well. So as you saw, you know, I, I'll do a little bit of a workout and then I will vacuum the room, I will put things back to where they belong and I treat that process as a workout as well. You know, today did not go as planned for me at all because I wasn't expecting an ocular migraine in the middle of the day, but things happen and we have to learn to live with them, I guess. And that's something that I have learned um, to live with. So I am going to go ahead and do a little bit of study time for my GMAT finally, because it is now 4.14, so I took exactly like 40 to 50 minute of a break. Uh, to feel a little bit better. Um, I do think though that I am gonna be revising standing up because I have been sitting a lot all day. So I'll put my desk up.
so I want to try and include a piece of valuable information in each one of my vlogs going forward. And so in today's video, I want to include a little session on how to create user stories and what user stories are. Product managers use user stories in order to communicate functional requirements, business logic requirements to designers and engineers so that designers can design prototypes according to those requirements and engineers can write out code according to the requirements that are in the user story. So for today's video, I'm going to use an example of a subscribe and unsubscribe flow for a user. So imagine that you're a product manager working for an XYZ company and this company has a newsletter. So this company sends out newsletters about product updates, discounts, job alerts, event notifications, et cetera, to their users. And you as a product manager join a meeting where the leadership says, okay, we're launching our newsletter. So now we have to make sure that if the users don't want to receive it, they unsubscribe. So let's imagine by default that a user that registers with the platform automatically is subscribed to all of the newsletters. However, you as a product manager need to take this requirement away and you need to break it down vertically and create a user story for the unsubscribe flow. So what you will do is you will go in Jira and you will click on create user story. This user story will be housed under a specific epic, and then this user story is going to have acceptance criteria. The acceptance criteria is gonna be written in this format, ACO1, which means acceptance criteria one, and then given one, then format. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start with the first part of this flow. So for a user to be able to unsubscribe, they're probably gonna click on an unsubscribe button from their email, and then they need to be directed onto a certain page. So as a product manager, you want to make sure that in your first acceptance criteria, you describe how the user should be unsubscribing from the emails. What is the first step that they need to take? So for example, acceptance criteria one, enable the user to click unsubscribe from their email. And then given one then is gonna look like this. Given that the user is checking their email, when the user sees an email from XYZ company, then the user should be able to see an unsubscribe button. Your next acceptance criteria needs to focus on what's gonna happen once the user clicks on that unsubscribe. So you're gonna break it down into smaller, smaller, the smaller vertical parts, right? So the next thing that the user usually does is they click on unsubscribe, they need to be taken to a certain page. So you wanna make sure that you indicate that a page needs to be created for the user to land on when they click on unsubscribe. Then you need to specify what's going to be on that page. So what do you want the user to unsubscribe from? Newsletters, job alerts, events, invitations, product updates, discounts, promotions, etc. right? You need to, you need to make sure that you, um, okay, our windows are being cleaned. You need to make sure that you communicate that in your user story. The next thing that you want to think about is once the user unsubscribe, unsubscribes from these newsletters from some of them or one of them, you want to make sure that you give the user the opportunity to resubscribe. And you, as a product manager, need to think about how is that going to happen? If the user has already unsubscribed, do you want to redirect them to a new page where they can resubscribe? Do you want this page to refresh immediately and turn into a, re a resubscribe page where the user can select those newsletters and resubscribe to them? Or do you want to send the user an email with a resubscribe option? So if you want to learn more about writing effective user stories, working with designers and engineers, low fidelity, high fidelity prototypes, if you want to become a product manager, maybe you want to make a career switch into product management, maybe 
you're looking for your first job, you're an early career professional, and you want to break into product management, you can sign up for my one month bootcamp. I'll leave the link in the description box down below, which is completely free, where I walk you through the syllabus and what to expect from the program. Now, uh, I'm gonna check my calendar. So at 6.30, I have a call with uh, my friends. This call is for us to work on a passion project. We're basically working on a, an experience providing platform for bootcamp graduates. So for example, if you are a software engineer, if you're a UX designer, if you're a product manager and you need real world experience working in a cross-functional team, that is going to be made available and that is going to be made possible by the platform that we are building. Again, it's a passion project. It's something that we work on outside of our day jobs on the weekends. It's not something that we make money off of either, um, but it's something that we enjoy doing. And so stay tuned. And if you are someone who is looking for work experience, if you're a recent bootcamp graduate and you need a portfolio or some type of work experience to put on your LinkedIn and on your resume, leave me a comment down below. Maybe we can connect on LinkedIn and I can introduce you to the platform. It is 540. I think I'm gonna grab a decaf and get ready for my 630 call. Hey guys, I'm gonna go ahead and jump on a call at 6.30, which is in exactly 15 minutes from now. And I'm gonna be on that call for about an hour. If you liked this video, if you enjoyed watching it, and if you would like me to continue making videos like these, uh, don't forget to like it and to subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment down below if you have any questions or suggestions for me. I'm going to wrap this video up and hopefully see you in one of my next videos thank you for watching